Hello everybody, this is Coffee with Cartoons, and I remember back in the day, instead of Teen Titans Go, there was a different show that seemed to dominate Cartoon Network's schedule. And unlike all the people on Tumblr at the time, I loved it. There was always something about the witty little action comedy that appealed to me. But I'd be the first to admit that the show wasn't perfect. But I loved it regardless, whip cracks and all. But this new Johnny test? This new Johnny test is perfect? The full potential to which Johnny can reach? I think it just might be. Today I will be going over how the Johnny test reboot on Netflix is, in my opinion, a superior show to the original Johnny test in the areas of character, design, and writing. Starting off with characters, let's talk about the flaming-haired hero of the show. Before, it seemed like Johnny was just a troublemaking kid with a short attention span and a penchant for chaos that just happened to save or win the day every time. Whether by luck or an outside force, i.e. his sisters, bling bling, or the government. But this new Johnny has somehow kept that chaotic and short attention span vibe while also making him more of a clever and intuitive character who plays a more intentional and responsible role as well. Johnny really feels like he deserves every win he gets in this new show. Johnny is still as video game obsessed as ever, but now he seems to be a bit more of an actual gamer who takes himself seriously enough to be doing these arm, wrist, and hand stretches before getting into a battle royale game with his friends, where he beats them all with ease, as it seems he has done time and time again. One thing I thought was especially interesting about this moment in the first scene is that Johnny is nearly the last person to talk. All the other characters almost building up to the flaming-haired hero by emphasizing that they needed all of these people to stop one kid and his dog. Which is pretty impressive as he is playing against many geniuses. And before he speaks, we watch him doing these stretches. Something oddly responsible for the old Johnny, if you ask me whom I could easily see brushing off others' advice to stretch and then injuring his hand the night before a big tournament. Watching him do this even strengthens that he deserves the win, that he was taking the game seriously, and that he wasn't going in cocky that it'd be an easy win, regardless of the fact that it was and he has apparently beat them all so many times before. Then the second episode exemplifies exactly how clever and thoughtful this new Johnny is. There is this bit where his dad is trying to ground him by adding more and more locking slash safety features to Johnny's room. And both times, Johnny asks his dad the right question. One his dad would feel obligated to answer as a parent, but would also give Johnny the information he needed to outsmart the new gadget and escape his room. First, his dad added a lock on his window. What if there's a fire? Johnny asked. There were heat sensors, his dad told him. So Johnny used a blow dryer to heat up the handle. Bars and metal doors were next, to which Johnny inquired, what if there's an earthquake? His dad says the bars have motion sensors, so Johnny kicked them until they opened. These are both great examples of him playing an active and smart role. Lastly, this new Johnny seems to have swapped out his previous laziness for a bigger emphasis on hyperactiveness. Him always trying to go or do something fun and that leading the episode in instead of him being irresponsible or rude. Oh yeah, this new Johnny is also a lot kinder. I can't remember a single instance of him making fun of someone or being mean-spirited this entire season, actually. I like the change. If you couldn't tell, I much prefer this Johnny as opposed to ye olden Johnny. Moving on, none of the other characters changed nearly as much as Johnny himself. Susan and Mary are pretty much the same crazy invention-making geniuses they've always been. Just like Johnny, what bit of mean tendencies they had seemed to dissipate. And they also have much more tame crushes on Gil. You know, like, a sane amount of crushing on Gil? Speaking of Gil, he actually has quite a bit more lines right from the start. Not too many. And trades a bit of his cool guy persona for a more excitable, well-meaning, golden retriever-like attitude which makes the girl's feelings for him feel more wholesome rather than creepy lusting over the hot, dumb, shirtless dude. Not much to say about Dookie. He is Johnny's best friend and voice of reason, though they are much more on the same page most of the time in this show now, rather than Dookie being the reluctant sidekick to some of his endeavors, or only tagging along under the guise of keeping Johnny out of trouble or in exchange for a steak bribe. 
Johnny Test has one of my favorite hero-villain dynamics, which is they try to kill each other on the weekdays and just vibe together on the weekends. And in the first episode, that dynamic is established again with them all playing this battle royale game. So epic. As for the designs, all of the characters have design changes, big and small, but now all with their new colored outlines instead of everyone getting the same black ones. And in my opinion, every single design in this show is superior to the old one. All of the personality is still there, but everything is just so much more pleasing. Not to mention the subtle shadows that add a bit more extra dimension to make the characters look just very quality. The biggest glow-ups, in my opinion, are Susan, Mary, and Bling Bling Boy. Mary and Susan's designs changing to make them feel a bit more natural and less confusing to look at, and Bling Bling having some of the biggest design changes still didn't change much, but this design is just 110% better to look at and is now treading on actual cute territory. Honestly, half the reason I wanted to make this video was because after I watched and loved the reboot, I wanted to go online and see what others thought. <laughs> and what I got was a bunch of posts and tweets showing screenshots or the cover art for each show and captioning it something along the lines of, Look how dirty they did Johnny puke emoji. And the confusion was just so real. Because literally, on which earth does this look better than this? Nostalgia must really be blinding for some people. The reboot is, in fact, not perfect, though. Because it's missing someone very important. Yes, R.I.P. Sissy. You will always hold a place on my childhood crushes list. Right next to all three of the witches from the Winx Club and Eris from Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. Overall, my feelings about the reboot can be summed up in one sentence. This reboot has all the appeal from the original while fixing literally all of its flaws, from design, to writing, to characters, to whip cracks. I highly recommend this as an easy or fun watch for both fans and foes of the original. Perfect for cleansing the palate after a BoJack Horseman marathon. This has been Coffee with Cartoons. Thank you all so much for watching, and let me know what you think of the reboot. And feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and hey, have a great day.